Good day to everyone and welcome to another coffee break program. Today we are going to discuss about the DNA plasmid vaccines which has been produced in India for the first time in the world without a needle. So this is a good opportunity for people who are very needle phobic. Let's analyze and see how it works. Before we discuss about the plasmid uh, DNA vaccines, let's recap about the vaccines that we have so far in the world against COVID-19. The first vaccine which was approved for COVID-19 was Pfizer-BioNTech. And Pfizer-BioNTech and Moderna, these two vaccines are based on mRNA technology, as you all know already, and uh, they uh, inoculate some mRNA particles into the system and by that the mRNA goes into the cellular compartment and then produce the spike proteins. Need two doses apart to generate the full uh, defense uh, immunity. And the second class of vaccines are based on viral vector carrying uh, uh, DNA material into the cellular compartment and thereby producing the spike proteins. The difference between these two are one mRNA vaccine does not go to the nucleus and it is going as an RNA particle and directly generate the uh, spike proteins in the cytoplasm. Whereas in uh, viral vector spike proteins in AstraZeneca, Sputnik V and Johnson and & Johnson, the technology is based on a viral vector. They use a viral vector DNA and uh, uh, inoculate the DNA into the uh, cellular compartment and thereby the it goes to the nucleus and from the nucleus it sends the signals of uh, M messenger RNA into the cytoplasm to produce the spike protein. AstraZeneca and Sputnik V needs two doses apart and especially I have to mention AstraZeneca uses only one viral vector for both vaccines but Sputnik V uses two viruses it uses one virus for the first dose and another adenovirus for the second dose. That is the difference. And Johnson & Johnson, it is also a viral vector vaccine, but the advantage is it needs only single dose. And the other group of vaccines are the Novavax. This is also a new technology. What it does is it harvests the spike protein grown in a cell culture and then it inoculates the spike proteins directly into the cellular compartment. There is no production uh, by the vaccine uh, initially and straight away they inoculate the produced uh, spike proteins into the system and thereby uh, generate the immunity. And uh, the other group is the Sinopharm and Covaxin. These two why, uh, vaccines are based on the old technique which uses the dead viral particles. There are advantages and disadvantages both but this is well known old technique and still we need two doses. So far these are the methods of vaccines that available uh, for the uh, global use against COVID-19 and now the latest one which is the DNA plasmid based vaccine is coming into the uh, usage and the first world first plasmid uh, vaccine is being produced in India by the Cadilla company and we are going to discuss about the DNA based plasmid vaccines today. Okay. Now we are going to discuss about the world first plasmid based intradermal needleless vaccine against COVID-19. It needs three doses, 20 days apart. 
So let's discuss about the plasmids. Scientists knew about the plasmids since 1940s and uh, plasmids are small DNA double-stranded rings inside the bacteria and, and it is additional to the nuclear material of the bacteria and the plasmids with its DNA ring has a capacity to uh, regenerate and proliferate and divide and also the plasmids could be transferred from one bacterium to another bacterium thereby it can be transmitted all over in the bacterial colony and trans uh, uh, the plasmids are being used for various other techniques as well especially we can use plasmids uh, for antibiotic resistant gene and its usage in uh, proliferation of a particular group of bacteria uh, in a culture. So plasmids are not new to the world and they knew about, the scientists knew about plasmid for ages. And also this is not the first plasmid based vaccine but this is the first plasmid based vaccine against COVID-19. Let's see the structure of the plasmid for a bit. It is a double-stranded DNA ring which is very small than the normal uh, nuclear material uh, amount in a bacteria and it has a place to origin and origin of repl replication and also it has a uh, it has many other parts among them there is a special portion where we can insert a gene we can delete a part of this plasmid ring and insert a new gene into that part by chemical methods using uh, bioenzymes so this is the technology that we use to produce this uh, plasmid based dna vaccine for an example uh, this is the COVID-19 genome, it has made four parts and the third part is responsible for producing the spike protein. So what the scientists do is they, they deduct this part, they extract this part chemically uh, using enzymes and uh, insert it to the gene insertion site of the plasmid. For this, what they do is they get the, get, get the bacterium, bacteria which produces this uh, uh, particular plasmid and by using enzymes, they dissolve this part, the gene insertion part and then using some other repairing enzymes, they insert this COVID-19 genome spike protein portion into this plasmid. Now, this plasmid contains uh, the COVID-19 proliferative gene and the proliferation of this plasmid is inhibited, inhibited and it, it is not, the capacity of proliferation is uh, biochemically uh, stopped. So these genes, these uh, plasmids cannot proliferate anymore. But the bacteria, when these are inserted into the bacterium, the bacteria proliferate and uh, produce more and more this type of uh, plasmids. So what the scientists do in this uh, injection technology, the vaccine technology is, they get these plasmids and the plasmids are injected into the skin using a special device, no needles. So I'm going to explain the way of uh, its function. Suppose that we produce the DNA plasmids using the technology 
and now what we have to do is we have to get 3 milliliters of this plasmid solution which is the vaccine and it should be loaded into a device which is uh, operated with a spring device. What happens is when the injection is loaded into this spring device and when the trigger triggers it generates a strong stream of injection without a needle into the skin. Now the solution is inside the dermis and this is intradermal area. What happens next? There are fibroblasts, dendritic cells, macrophages, B cells and keratinocytes. This solution goes into those cells intracellular compartment and uh, then it reaches the nucleus and it enters into the nucleus. This mechanism is much complicated and uh, we are not going to discuss about it. And there is no bacterial vector, there is no uh, spike protein uh, uh, lipid uh, particles straight away this plasmid injected into the intradermal area and then it enters into the immunogenerating cells one of these cells it passes through the plas uh, cytoplasm and enters into the nucleus remember this is a double stranded dna particle so inside the nucleus it generates messenger RNA and the messenger RNA comes out of the nucleus and produces spike protein in the cytoplasm. Those spike proteins are presented into the immune system bloodstream and uh, using the MHC complexes and antigen presentation uh, through the uh, mechanism of interleukin 4 pathway it produces antibodies. So these are the spike protein antibodies produced as a result of this uh, DNA plasmid injection. Okay. This trial is being conducted in India by the company called Cadilla and the phase three trial is uh, undergoing and uh, uh, it uh, already undergone but not peer reviewed yet and to the uh, 28,000 participants were used and the special feature of these uh, participants was there were 12 to 18 years old young persons more than 1000 participating in this uh, trial so this injection can be used for 12 to 18 age of people as well. So that is an advantage. And the other advantages are, it is easy to produce because, you know, the bacteria, it's very easy to grow bacteria in the cultures. So uh, it's a matter of growing the bacterial cultures. And uh, the storage capacity, the storage temperature is zero to eight, but it is quite stable in room uh, temperature for a, a quite reasonable time period. So the temperature issue is not coming up and easy to change. According to the new variants, we can change the spike protein genome part and produce new vaccines uh, if it is necessary for us to change the type of uh, uh, genetic component of the spike protein production. And the other advantage is this research was done while the peak infection is with Delta variant. So 67% effective against the COVID-19 infection. So these uh, figures are against the COVID-19 uh, COVID Delta variant because at that time 99% prominent uh, uh, dominant uh, variant was Delta in India and it is effective 100% against deadly COVID and uh, serious COVID infection and hospital admission. 
the other advantages needless as already we have discussed now let's see what are the disadvantages of this vaccine let's see the disadvantages one it needs three doses 20 days apart to achieve full immunization uh, immunity and uh, that is a bit of a concern but they are trying to make it two doses it is under experimental levels but not confirmed yet the other disadvantage is it needs a special device to administer the injection hope you enjoyed my program of this plasmid vaccines without needles and uh, hope to meet you again with another educational program uh, in my coffee break and goodbye to everyone <laughs>